Good evening, my name is Sheree. <laughs> and oh, I'm Chris. Hi. And we're Technomadia. And you are joining us for one of our live video chat events. So yeah, we've been on the road for 11 years, but now, as you see, we're not on the road, we're on a boat. And, well, it's all about beds. <laughs> and we started doing these live chats a couple year, a few years ago, actually. Um, they're just a fun way for us to share with you, our followers and readers and viewers. Um, basically, this is us inviting you into our living room, or in this case, bedroom. our bedroom. That's kind of a first. <laughs> yes. um, and we talk about, we take a topic, talk about it, then we do some Q&A. Um, if you're watching the archive and your preference is for more produced content, then you might want to go click over to a different uh, playlist of ours. We do yeah. have a bunch of different types of content. So this is likely to be over an hour long. Yeah, so, so the difference is that the, the produced version of this video is going to have all the extra bits trimmed away. There might be some other video inserted, some slides and some pictures. Whereas this live stream is just going to be really raw. There will be camera fumbling around. There will be... Um, <laughs> Hopefully not technical difficulties, <laughs> but this is the raw stream. So yep, but I will be. You want to watch. I, I will be producing a more produced version of this video afterwards. So pick your whichever you prefer. If you want more casual hangout with us, stick around. Yes. So anyway, the topic this evening is the quest for the perfect mattress, uh, particularly uh, mattresses for RVs and boats. And there are challenges with them. Now, <laughs> most RVs and boats, when you buy them from the manufacturer, well, I don't know what comes with the boat. I haven't bought one from a manufacturer they, yet. They do come with a they, preset mattress. <laughs> they, they don't sell them without. <laughs> but you get what um, the manufacturer has negotiated and installs in your bed room. And, <laughs> and it uh, may not be your preference in bed. It may not even be a high quality mattress. And then particularly if you're buying a used RV or boat, you might have a mattress with a questionable history that you really are <laughs> eager to replace as well. So the challenge with an RV or boat mattress is in most cases, they're not a standard size. So like right now we are in our boat's <laughs> primary, our uh, prime cabin, which is a V berth. So actually at the head of it, it's, yeah, it's, it's in a V. But it it gets looks narrow like a, it gets there. narrow, so there's a V shape on it. Uh, in some RVs, you might have rounded corners at the edge mm -hmm. uh, that give you more walk room around the bed. Or a lot of RVs actually have hatches too that mm -hmm. the bed needs to be able to bend and fold at least part way so that it can get you all your storage underneath. Um, other variations is you might have a short version of a standard uh, hassle mattress size, like a short queen, mm -hmm. just for space saving because RVs and boats we have unusual shapes to have to fit our <laughs> oh, beds God. in. So, if you will excuse us for just a moment, we're going to get out of bed because this isn't exactly the best uh, presenting um, <laughs> posture. posture. Uh, my back's going to get really sore by the end of this. We're going to move back to the living room and then we're going to talk about some of the options for improving your mattress situation. Okay, let's go walk. <laughs> and you know, one of the challenges here, headroom can be a challenge with uh, RV beds and boat beds in particular. I'll carry that so it doesn't look okay. too much. You carry the iPad. Okay. And you see here's another bed option is a bunk bed, which is a, something else that's here. Do, 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 do. And we go down the hallway and another bedroom. So we actually have three bedrooms in this boat. Um, so this one is actually a long full. Um, so it's the length of a queen size, but the width of a full size. And plus a little foot room. Very unusual mattress and sheets to find. You gotta get creative. So just give us one moment to get set up. We got some new lighting that we can hopefully play with this evening. Okay, adjust the altitude. Um, so uh, our typical format with these is we are gonna present on the topic and then we will do Q and A. I usually have assistants that are helping gather your questions. Unfortunately, they don't seem to have shown up yet. So Patty and or David, if you're around, uh, pop into the shared Google document. Um, if they don't show up, we will just start taking questions when we get done with this segment. Um, otherwise- and We might miss the questions you asked before yeah. that part. So hold off any questions for now because the YouTube chat screen, as you can see, is very small and I'm going probably going to miss them. Okay. Okay. Turn up our light. Our oh, yes, light. the new light. Just patience, please. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Studio lighting. How is that looking? That's a little bright. Oh. Take it back. You're going to yeah. blind me. How's that? I think that's good. Okay. So, no complaints about too dark. Hopefully we'll talk loud enough. And actually, let me turn off this one air conditioner here. And I should get rid of the last in the background noise. Yeah, this moving the camera around thing, it's a little distracting. But I promise we're getting to it. We just couldn't resist starting in bed. Okay. It had to. Had to be done. There we go. Okay. All <sighs> right. So... You've got one of these unusual mattress sizes like we do. What are some of your options? First one <laughs> is um, just putting a mattress topper on it. Um, oh, yeah, mattress toppers. Do it. They're cheap. They're easy. and It's a great solution to try out if you can improve the situation enough to make it workable. You can get them in all sorts of materials from memory foam, latex, egg crate, probably you know stuffed with bedding, you know, whatever you yeah. like. And the mattress toppers, you can actually get a lot of them on well, any big box store or Amazon Prime. So you can get a topper delivered overnight and instantly. If you've got, if we've done this. We've been having like, I can't stand this bed one more night. You get a <laughs> topper the next day. And it can make a world of difference. And it's a small investment to do before you dive into a thousand dollars for something or, or more, or, for more. Some, or some mattresses so um you can get them anywhere from i don't know 50 bucks to 150 bucks a really affordable option you can get them from one inch to four inches um mm -hmm. you can get them ventilated all sorts of models that are out there um we that's always been our first go-to in what we try mm -hmm. and those if you've got an odd shaped bed just take some scissors or an electric knife uh, and you can cut them down to fit the size of the bed yeah, they're usually, because they're small, and they're usually not super, super dense foam, they're not too hard to adjust, and they're not too much out the door. You know, you're not destroying something that's cost a lot of money if just to experiment with. So that narrow bed that I showed you down there, uh, to improve that one, we put a two-inch memory foam topper on it, but because it's a queen, it's a full size and a queen size length, I just took some scissors, trimmed it all down. Yeah. It was super easy to do. Mm -hmm. um, the next option is having a mattress custom made to fit the exact dimensions of your bed. Okay. Um, That's a pricey it, option. It is pricey, in particular if you've got some really unusual demands like curves or obscure vibras and stuff. It's sometimes you know that might be the easiest way to go is just to let somebody who can do it properly and professionally take care of it but it's a one you're getting a one-off and there's no returns <laughs> yes um so mattress insider is one company that reaches out to boaters and rvers and does do custom mattresses as well as they have some preset ones as well uh, so they might be an option to look into they'll give you a quote and work with you to find the right materials for your sleep preferences mm -hmm. uh, uh, next it's just building your own yeah diy is uh, you can buy a lot of the same heavy duty foams and stuff and just kind of make a sandwich to, to fit your own personal needs, mm -hmm. just as if you were one of these mattress companies. It's yeah. start with, a lot of work. But. Start with a solid core, find the softer mattresses, and just build it up to whatever height you need. You can even get a case made around it. Um, there's all sorts of resources out there for going direct to manufacturers of different foams and latexes, and you can just configure your own. Yeah, and then start your own online mattress company if you want to, because <laughs> there, there seems to be go. about a thousand of them right now. <laughs> Um, if you have the option, if you look at your layout of your RV or boat, is you might actually be able to adjust your platform to be more of a standard size. Yeah. And we've actually seen this in particular. A lot of um, older RVs had the master bedroom set up with uh, two twins instead of a, a queen or a king, because I guess old, old time people didn't sleep together or something, or they were built for... Um, I leave guess, it to beaver. Yeah, the leave it to beaver world. <laughs> Um, and so we know a lot of people who've like ripped those old platforms out and modified and built a, a joined bed or, you know, adjust the size of the bed. But before you start planning on that, look what's underneath the platforms because sometimes there might be your tanks and your wiring and things like that. That would be a disaster to start tearing apart until you know what's really there. <laughs> And there's another option. Um, if you like a spring, like a box spring style, so a lot of RVs and boats, you're not going to have the option of a box spring and then a mattress on top because no. usually it's on a platform. There's just not a lot of space in a lot of, in these RVs and mm -hmm. stuff. Um, but there's a system called the Froli. It's spelled F-R-O-L-I. And basically what these are... Well, micro box spring. Yeah, they're, they're little springs. They sell them in sets for different sizes and V-berths and different uh, standard shapes or standard for non-standard uh, mm -hmm. mobile living. And... 
you get a kit of them and you assemble them um, and they interlock with each other and it creates a, a, a spring sort of uh, system underneath it. Um, so that's another option to look into if you want more of that box spring and, feel. And it also buys you ventilation underneath. Which we'll talk about that mm -hmm. in a bit, why that can be important. Yeah. Um, so, but it's not always, not all RVs and boats come with these unique shaped mm -hmm. beds. Some of them, especially larger RVs or aft style cabin boats, come with regular size beds. Yes, regular queens or even regular kings. And that opens up a whole world, a whole market of just off the shelf mattresses. And there's a lot of them out there. Um, but not all of them are suitable. <laughs> so you can walk into any mattress store and get one. Um, you can do some of these online ordering companies that now, like the Caspers, Purples, Lisa's, Yoga Beds, all these ones where they give you the 100-day trial. There's a thousand of them out there. You can, you, can, you can sleep forever for free if you just keep going from trial to trial. We tried that. We'll talk about it a little bit. <laughs> um, but there are some considerations, even with going with, the, if your width and uh, length height. are, uh, are mm -hmm. different. But you need to keep in mind the height. Right. Um, like in our bus, we have uh, our closet opens over the bed, so we can we can only have like 12 inches that we can go on the right. RV. And other RVs, sometimes if you put a, a full size double stuffed uh, residential mattress, you'll be towering over your nightstands and stuff. You're, you'll completely throw off the shape mm -hmm. of the room. Or uh, you might have a lower ceiling, like you saw in our bedroom here mm -hmm. in the boat. We didn't want to go with a very thick mattress because we wanted to actually be able to sit up in bed mm -hmm. uh, and do other things. <laughs> and um, other considerations is the uh, weight of the mattress. Um, number one, your cargo carry capacity. Be very aware of that mm -hmm. if you go with a very heavy mattress. And well, and then related to weight is how are you going to actually get it in and onto an RV or boat? You might have to to fold it and squeeze it through windows or squeeze it down a narrow hallway. And these big, heavy, stiff mattresses can be completely impossible. And then the last time you want to realize that is when the delivery guys are trying to, to <laughs> stuff it in, stuff a cork in. Uh, and then also related to that is a lot of times underneath your bed platform is storage of some mm -hmm. sort. Um, in our case, our freshwater tanks are underneath our mattress, or you might have storage that you need to get to. Some of them are on a, like a hydraulic lift, uh, and there might be weight limitations yeah. that you need to deal with. You might have to upsize your hydraulics, on your, upsize your lifts, which a lot of people end up having to do once they put in a new mattress. Okay. It's heavier. Um, so those are some of the considerations for going even with a standard size mattress yeah. to keep in mind. Um, other considerations is a lot of RVers choose the sleep number system. So what this is is a uh, fancy air mattress system. It's very, very heavily marketed. Um, some I would say overhyped. Some would say it's heaven on earth air mattress. Um, and on the larger size ones, like queen and king size ones, both of their two chambers in there, so two sleep partners who prefer different furnaces can set their number. You could have a number, all your own. Um, some of the concerns with those, uh, they're super light, so they're great for RVs, um, so you don't have to worry about the carry capacity. And of course, if you are in a relationship with someone who likes a different firmness than you, it can be a relationship saver. Um, <laughs> but the concern with them is, especially in RVs, if you're traveling through elevations, like through mountain right. grades. Your number is based on your pressure altitude around you, and as you blue go up, up a mountain. You're going to get softer? No, no. As you no. go up a mountain, it's going to expand. And we've had friends tell us that they've been driving along and they thought they blew a tire, but it was actually their mattress exploding back in their bedroom, which is not a fun thing you want to have happen as you go over a mountain pass. And in and, and, and yeah. uh, non-worst cases, your, your uh, firmness is going to change when you get yes. to your next destination. Mm -hmm. uh, there are apparently some RV versions that have a relief valve that prevent the exploding mattress syndrome. Right. So Otherwise, just lower the mm -hmm. number all the way down, make it super soft before you drive through the mountains just to Keep stay mind. safe. Another consideration is in RVs and boats is we have to deal with condensation because our vessels aren't always uh, temperature regulated yes. nonstop. And so, you, and when you're sleeping on it, you have condensation that's going to form. And there's not a lot of places for it to go in a small space yeah. like ours. Yeah, and also sometimes drips from the windows might run down and around and stuff, and you end up with kind of the moldy mattress syndrome. So you want to make sure there's some sort of ventilation underneath. So you have a solid platform in a lot of these cases, and then a solid mattress, and you want to put some sort of ventilation under. So you can do like a low pile carpet. You might be able to get some of that uh, non-stick grip uh, stuff that you might use underneath mm -hmm. furniture. Uh, there is actually a company called Hypervent that makes a specific material to go underneath mattresses for just this situation as well. If you want to go with a, a, a specific mm -hmm. targeted solution. Mm -hmm. 
so keep that in mind. Uh, it is very common for RVers and boaters to find mold and mildew growing underneath their mattresses. Yes, check it every so often, particularly yep. if you're in a really humid area. <laughs> so that's a general overview of your options. Uh, now we're going to talk about what we've tried and the pros and cons of different solutions that we've yeah, used. Yeah, yeah. So we've okay. got 11 years of RV sleeping and, and boat sleeping. Uh, so we started off in our first two um, RVs were small travel trailers and both of those beds were dinettes that converted to the bed. So you end up with this kind of Tetris of, of cushions that you have to assemble to make your bed and it doesn't necessarily make for the um, you got ridges and stuff because they're they're the seats and the backs and everything all pushed down there um, so you want to have a layer on top. We found, you know, you can sleep directly on them. And they for a night or two, it's but fine. For a night or two, but you've got, like, the, the seams, and they're in really awkward spots. So you, memory foam was a lifesaver. Or a mattress topper. Or mattress topper. So in both those cases, we did about a four-inch memory foam topper on top of the dinette, and we that was still thin enough that we could roll it up and put it against the back of the wall when we put the dinette back up uh, to be, so we could still use our dinette. Uh, but that made actually some of probably our best RV sleeping nights were those because right. we had a really for, firm, thick core with that uh, dinette cushion and then with a really nice memory foam topper yeah. on but, top. No, something that anybody else would have to consider is just how hard do you want to make your transformation between bed and dinette, though. Mm -hmm. So how thick and thin. And you know, we eventually gave up on the idea of transforming. And we um, just bed mode always. And that was one reason we eventually wanted a motorhome is we got tired of that transformation. Um, back and forth. Mm -hmm. um, so after um, the uh, trailers, we did go to a motorhome, which is a vintage bus <laughs> conversion, as many of you yeah. know. Mm -hmm. And when we were looking for that, we specifically looked for a standard size, preferably queen. And we Walk wanted, around. We, wanted we were tired of crawling. It was fun when we were first dating <laughs> to crawl over each other, yes. but we wanted a walk around queen. And the big idea, because before I hit the road, I had a Tempur Pedic, and you had. We think we're just a, like a. Standard. It was it was a pretty high end, just regular. You know, go into a furniture store, and I I'll take your middle end plus plus mattress. You know, not the crazy one, but mm -hmm. not the low end. Yeah. It was a nice, right? Nice home mattress. Yeah, but then you slept on my Tempur Pedic. Yeah. Remember, we started off separately yep. and, mm -hmm. and emerged. Yeah, yeah. and yeah, your Tempur Pedic. I like the Tempur Pedic, but it was also a little bit too unmoving for me. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, we were looking for something a little bit different when we. But we, we knew we wanted to get a higher end mattress in the bus mm -hmm. um, and that's one reason with the bus conversion we didn't have to worry about weight constraints and we wanted the standard size so we could choose anything that we wanted. Mm -hmm. um, it actually came with a pretty nice RV mattress in it. It was older. Mm -hmm. It was thin um, and we liked the firmness of it so we ended up doing another four inch memory foam topper on top yeah, of it. And that made it work pretty decently for quite a while before it started to wear out. We got a couple years out of that. I think we had about two years on it then it started to split because we always got the ventilated one with the holes and those do tend to, to split first mm -hmm. because you, know, you use them all the time. Um, and so when that started to become a problem, we went into a mattress store intending okay. to get a Tempur Pedic. Yeah, and we're like, you know, let's get the let's get a real mattress. We don't have any weight constraints. You know, we don't have to have any of these crappy little RV mattresses. Let's get a real mattress store mattress. This ended up being a really disappointing experience overall. Yeah, we ended up with a Tempur Pedic knockoff. It was by Corsicana. Uh, we actually, in the showroom, it felt better than Tempur Pedic. Yeah, it was the, our, our favorite mattress in the entire showroom, cost aside. And, and it was for like $800. Uh, had it delivered. It was fine for the first couple of months, but then it started to develop a dip in the middle. Now, our sleep challenges are, we're obviously not little people, <laughs> and uh, we spoon in the middle of the bed. That's how we start off, and then usually in the course of the night, we end up on our own sides of the bed. And then and in the morning, we're back spoon. spooning again. Yeah. But when we're not spooning, we don't want to still be falling back into the center of the bed, and that's what this mattress turned uh, into. It, it, it turned into a little cavern, and we'd both just roll to the middle, and the cat would hop on top, and it would get really kind of unpleasant. Over. <laughs> uh, so we checked the, the platform that it was on, made sure it was thick enough, uh, that it was reinforced enough, and that it wasn't the platform mm -hmm. that was the issue. And when we did our bus remodeling in 2015, I can't believe it's been two years since we yeah. went through that fiasco, mm -hmm. um, we were redoing the uh, water tanks underneath the bed anyway, and we had it even reinforced more. Um, and then at that same time, serendipitously, uh, Lippert Components reached out to us and offered us a Denver mattress, Eurotop Supreme... Their, their top-end RV mattress saying, hey, you want to try this? Mm -hmm, sure, we're, we're, we're Wait, trying it. We're okay. replacing the mattress anyway. No harm done. And... You know, we really appreciate it, and it wasn't great. 
Yeah, for us, anyway. Now, there's a, our other friends of ours, the Snowmads in particular, got the same mattress. They loved theirs. But um, ours started to actually yeah, cavern sure. again, yeah. and it, uh, we just don't think it was designed for... Larger people. Larger people. It just didn't hold up. Uh, Denver Mattress did uh, replace the mattress for us once. They, we went to one of their stores, and they swapped it right out in their driveway. Or just their to see apartment. if it was a one-off defect. And, and it was sure enough, it, it, after a few weeks, it started to show signs of it again. And, you know, sleep's too important. We're not going to put up with that. And so at that point, we decided to try this new online mattress. The Mattress in a Box fad, fad that's taken over. There's There are, I think, over 100 companies now that are selling mattresses in a box. And so you go to their, their online um, store, you order it, it shows up in a couple of weeks, compressed into a box. Some of them are a couple days. Yeah. Rolls out like a burrito, expands. And if you don't like it, they all come with usually a 100-day, uh, no questions asked return, and they arrange to come and pick it up. Yes. And this works out great for nomads because you get the mattress delivered to your RV, <laughs> and then when you decide you don't like it, someone comes to your RV. And takes it away. Even if it's in a different location where you've got it. Right. So we've done this across country and got a mattress over here, and... Well, 90 days later, had it taken away over there. And they do try to uh, donate it, but we we found most often they couldn't find somewhere to donate it, and they ended up having, uh, like, 1-800-JUNK come and get it, which, I mean, they do try to get it out of yeah. landfills and into someone's house. So, yeah. Yes, but, but th that's that's kind of their business model. It's, it's a, you know, these companies, you know, do your research to find the ones that seem to fit you, and they understand that a certain percentage are, you know, not going to go for it, and it, it's kind of how they've designed it's it all. It's so. built into it, and you end up paying about, uh, so like a Tempur-Pedic goes for, what, two to $3,000 now. Uh, most of these are priced right around the under the $1,000 mark. Um, there's a great site called sleepopolis.com. They do mm -hmm. reviews of all these, mm -hmm. and I recommend going there and kind of looking for your body type and sleep preference to choose the ones to try first. And there's an amazing number of YouTube mattress reviews and mm -hmm. stuff too so you need to see find people who are like you and have them that are you know showing their unboxing videos of their mattress in a box and you know get a taste mm -hmm. for them all you know a lot, a lot of these people online who are reviewing the mattresses are doing it for the um, affiliate programs so you know be a little hesitant unless they've done some real comparative stuff because the, they get a big kickbacks but mm -hmm. yeah that's how yep. it works so the ones we tried we started with lisa that's mm -hmm. l-e-e-s-a and that one seemed, by all the reviews we watched, yeah. to be what would be ideal for us. And for the first several weeks, it was really nice. It was good, but not great, is basically what it came down to. And for for the money, we were looking for great. We wanted we wanted a great night's sleep. And it was uh, priced at seven ninety nine. dollars um, And I think the thing that came about is it really is designed for smaller framed people, especially than him. And you were starting to have... Um, I'd, I'd have like a hip start to fall asleep. Yeah, yeah. it was just... He was, was pressing too much down into the firmness of the core. Yeah. And it was, it was cutting off Didn't circulation. Didn't give me good support and when I'm sleeping on my side. So when we contacted them, they had someone out in 24 hours, arranged to where our location was, picked it up, and then as soon as they got notification mm -hmm. it was picked up, our refund was it. Yep. Super easy, friendly to work with. Yep. I do recommend Lisa. It was very high quality, great customer service. Mm -hmm. Um the next one we decided we decided on a whim to try something a little crazier. We went with the purple. It's not. It's it's purple inside. It's kind of this squishy gelatin. In a grid. Um, in a grid, um, and it comes with a free seat cushion. <laughs> um, and they have they have really clever ads where they're trying to squish eggs on their mattress, and you cannot squish an egg no matter what you do. Okay, so first of all, we never we, squished an egg. Um, well. I don't normally squish eggs in bed, so the, I don't know how important that is, but they're trying to show that the pressure points are there, and we did get pressure relief on it, but mm -hmm. that bed felt so freaking weird. It's It's got this kind of weird jelly feel and squish and stuff, and it just... It, was always kind of in the back of your mind that you're on top of this layer of purple gelatin. I'd wake up in the middle of the night thinking pattern. I had, like... I don't know, suctiony things all over my body. And then when you wake up in the morning, you feel like you're peeling yourself off a waffle iron. Yeah. And, and so, because it has that, that purple grid at the top, of, you know, right underneath the little layer of mattress topper. And we kept thinking, well, maybe this would be great if we put a, another layer of, put a memory foam topper on top of this to get rid of that purple layer feel. But then we're like, we're That's not going to put a $100 memory topper on top of a thousand this $1,000 dollar mattress. Let's just send it back and find something better. And at that point, we tried Helix. And that's at, I think, yourhelix.com, H-E-L-I-X. And what we liked about them is you, good gimmick. <laughs> uh, you actually go through an interview where you put in your weight you put in, for each partner. Uh, you put in your sleep preferences, if you're a side sleeper, back sleeper, stomach sleeper, 
um, and if you have any like sleep apnea or anything like that. And um, you can choose if you want them to design you a split bed so that it, each side is optimized for each slot each sleep partner or right. a blended. hype a blended mm -hmm. is what they call yeah. it so mm -hmm. they're trying to mesh your two preferences right. and again you know we we actually it's like it worked that's that and this is the great thing about these trial mattresses is you can really give them a proper trial because you at a mattress store you're on something for 30 seconds or a minute and that doesn't tell you anything you have to sleep on something for a week or two for your body to adjust and being able to go through two or three or four and find what really works for you is wonderful that's what's great about these bed in a box business models um, so yeah, we settled on the Helix. Uh, we decided to keep that one. We have going, it'll be a year in August since mm -hmm. we've had it. Obviously we've not been in the bus since April, but we had several months on it. And even when we went back into the bus in May, we did a, a one week oh, bus trip. It was trip. wonderful. So sleep uh, on it again. It was yeah. awesome. Yeah. So big fans, big thumbs up on the Helix. It was nice. All right. Now talking about the boat. <laughs> uh, as you saw when we started, um, our mattress is a V-berth. So it's in the front. It looks very rectangular, but in the, when the top front, in particular, the bottom. There's just a little bit of a, um, an angle uh, in the front, and we have also a low ceiling, so we wanted to make sure that we had plenty of headroom. Uh, when we moved room. in, it was a sleep number, and not even a customized one, so it was kind of like wedged in, and it sort of worked, but sort of didn't quite fit into the V. And we wanted to give it a try, because so many people have glowed about the sleep numbers and said, you should really try this, but sleep numbers are so expensive to buy up front, and they don't normally come with a 100-day free trial. Right. It wasn't something we were going to try, because we didn't intuit we wanted it. And, and we gave it a fair shot. We gave it a month of, of trying And it's it. just a big, fancy air mattress. And what actually, um, what people love about the sleep number is that you have each person's has got their separate control of softness. But we sleep in the middle, so and spoon, and we're sleeping on the seam, which is probably the most uncomfortable spot in a sleep number bed. Uh, so, and we tend to prefer the same mattress. We we have a large large crossover of what we like in mattresses. Right. right. So. We were finding we weren't snuggling as much because it was the crease. pushing us out. It, instead of having the the, op, the effect of the the caved in mattresses pulling us together and having us feel like we're stuck in a cave, the sleep member was pushing us into our own separate zones, and we really didn't like that. We're newlyweds. <laughs> we got married. We just got married in, in yeah. April, so yeah. we didn't like we that. We want to be snuggled. <laughs> not, yeah. So um, we thought that we were going to two solutions. We didn't want to do the the online ordering thing because of the V birth in the front. We were going to have to modify it, either cut the mattress down ourselves, which we don't want to, yep. didn't want to do with a thousand dollar mattress. Yeah, that, that, that kind of ruins that, huh? Yeah, they'll take it away after a hundred days yeah. if they come up and it's yeah. all chopped apart. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and then the other um, option, so we had left us with two options is where are they going to go to Mattress Insider and uh, work with them to do a custom, do a, buy a custom one from them. That'd be or, pricey. That would be probably pricey and we're willing to invest it for a good night's sleep um and we just happened at the oh we're going to go on amazon and just order a 10 inch memory foam highly yeah. rated bra and, yeah. and then cut it down ourselves because yeah. yeah on amazon they have bed in the boxes that are even cheaper you don't necessarily get the 100 day returns on a lot yeah. of them you can get a lot of them for in the in the three to four five hundred dollar range right. so, some really so we thought we'd do that and then we happen to be in big lots of all Buying places pillows. <laughs> crazy and they have their own brand called zeopedic at z-e-o pedic and you laid down on I it i just i just i was like <laughs> hopped down i was like oh oh my gosh um and just kind of rolled back and forth I was like this is kind of crazily comfortable for a like 380 dollar yeah it was 399 big lots you know roll it out of the store mm -hmm. So we, we figured if we're going to spend that much on Amazon anyway, on an unknown, we might as well go with one that we liked in the store. So that's what we did. Now, the mistake we made is we thought it was a V-birth. Okay, we're just going to cut the corners off the top. All you boaters out there are laughing your butts off right now. I know it. Because you know exactly where this story is going. It's curved. <laughs> Boats are very three-dimensional, so it's not just a V-birth in the front. It's curved down. So... Um, I tried to find an electric knife because it is the best way to cut foam because it'll just go right through it. Could not find an electric knife at Big Lots. We didn't have a lot of time on our hands. I was like, oh, well, whatever. It's just two cuts on a V, right? I can do that with scissors or a knife. Yeah. You spent two hours of your hands and... Carving. Uh, I had to carve <laughs> the bottom. And uh, yeah, I... Now, what? we're doing this at 11 o'clock at night, and there is not a 24-7 electric knife shop around the corner. <laughs> and here we had a torn-up bedroom. So yeah. I endured. I actually carved it out with scissors. And But in the end, the, the awesome. Zeopedic has been amazing. We're, like, kind of blown away. It's one of the best beds we've ever had, and it was, like, a big lot special. It's like, okay, <laughs> there we go. So I guess that's kind of our, our history of mattresses. So 
that's our mattress history. That's our, our quest for the mattress. <laughs> I think it's time to open some wine. I'll open some wine and you can start diving into some questions. All right. Um, so we do these video chats for fun. It's and just, for wine. And for wine. It's our way to share with you guys. If you appreciate them, we'd love your gratitude. Um, write us afterwards, email us, leave a comment on, in the long-term video archive. Um, let us know that you love like hearing about you know life on the road and some of the tips we share. If you really like our content, uh, we extra appreciate if you go over to our website at technomadia.com, go down to the bottom right-hand corner, and we have a leave a tip where you can send us a virtual bottle of wine or any other gift item that you like. And uh, the gratitude, the gifts, they keep us inspired to come back every month and share. And what wine are wine, we? Chateau Saint-Michel. Yes. And I forget, we had two people gift us a bottle of wine at about the same time in person. Um, and they both had Chateau in the name, so I forget if this is Eric and Jeanette who, or the previous owner of the boat who <laughs> gifted this one to us. Right. But to all of you. Particularly people who give us wine in person. Make us happy. Cheers. So, cheers to you. <laughs> All right. So I am going to move over. It looks like uh, um, uh, Patty is entering in some comments for us. Hey, uh, hi, Patty. I'm trying to find the actual. Okay. So I think we've already. So we, we asked somebody asked if we consider sleep. Remember, we got to that. Um, do you think it would be possible to get an adjustable bed into an RV? So the Depend electric adjustable ones? You know, some of the newer, higher-end RVs are coming with electric adjustable beds, and they're using it as a mech that actually slides up and gives you, like, double the uh, bedroom right. capacity. And, uh, right, because, yeah, it opens up the aisle space at the end of the bed as it folds up. So, I... I don't know. Find out the manufacturer. Um, the manufacturers must be sourcing those parts from somewhere, mm -hmm. and you might be able to track them down, because... Yeah, yeah, if you want that, it might need to be built in, though. It could be, there might be mechanics and mm -hmm. motors and... It's going to depend so much on your RV mm -hmm. and what options you have. But yeah, it's totally uh, totally possible if you're doing yeah. a renovation to do that. Um, so I'm trying to try to find the mattress related. Mm -hmm. uh, someone asked, any thoughts on the yoga bed mattress? And I remember we researched um, it. Yeah, no, it, it, had, it had some pretty decent reviews. I mean, there are literally over a hundred of these bed in a box companies right now. And I researched dozens of them and we picked a few to try. Um, you know, some of them are fly by nights, and they they you know the thing is you want to make sure they're still in business a hundred days later, so they can give you um, a refund and take it away if you need them to. So, mm -hmm. you know, the the big the big one on the block is Casper. They're the, they kind of started the model, and they're the biggest around. Mm -hmm. um, Casper's lost a lot of points because they're busy suing a blogger because they didn't like the blogger's review of their mattress and how they were talking about things. So Casper lost a lot of points in my book for that. So when we, after, especially after our experience with Lisa, and we really discovered that some of them, especially because they're all in about the 10 to 12 inch thickness range, mm -hmm. is some of them were more designed for lighter weight people. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the reviewers, like the guy at Sleepopolis, we loved his review style. He's a twig. <laughs> but he's 145 pounds. I thought and he was like 45 pounds. Maybe 45. Yeah, he's, he's very, tiny. very thin. So his experience with the mattresses is going to be very different than ours. So we started, I think yoga yoga mattress was designed, is was designed, yeah. had ratings it, better for lighter yeah. weight people. Yeah, so, so, so go, go look into, find reviewers who are like you, mm -hmm. because... So much in these mattresses depends on your body weight and also depends on your sleep style. Are you a side sleeper? You're, are you a spooner and stuff like that? Um, ben would like to uh, like us to repeat the name of the boat mattress and it's uh, Big Lots is it, a, a it, discount it, seller. And it's it, their brand. Uh, it's, well, it's available a few other places, I believe. But Big Lots had a had bought a big lot of them okay. and was selling them. It's Zeopedic. It's Z E O Pedic. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it's completely generic mattress, and um, but it is surprisingly good and really freaking cheap. Um, uh, Wendy would like to know: Does memory foam hold up in a marine environment? And I have not heard anything to the contrary. Never, no, and I never. think a lot of sailors use memory foam um, for mm -hmm. it. And just be aware of that ventilation and the and yep. the. the and, and also, yeah, I guess you do have more potential for water ending up on your mattress and stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, we've got hatches right over our bed, and, you know, things can leak, things can drip. That's another reason I don't want to invest a lot of money exactly. in a mattress. Is it, it might end up soaked one day, mm -hmm. or two days, or three days and mm -hmm. stuff. Okay, <laughs> any other questions about mattresses before we start just general chit-chat? 
makes it easier in editing the archive if I keep <laughs> all the questions. How many people showed up for this? 200. 200 people, hey. Right. Sweet, this is, um, yeah, YouTube Live, we are experimenting with this. It's, mm -hmm. We've got some pretty cool abilities with YouTube Live, so. Yeah, we're able, to, we're actually embedding this into our video center on the webpage, so technomadi.com slash video. It's embedded there. It's able to embed it on our Facebook page so people can watch from multiple places. Um, um, not seeing any other bed questions. I think I'm seeing little text messages from my aunt Sherry. So, hey Sherry, I can't read them at the moment because um, mm -hmm. they're on a different device, but I see your name popping up. So, cool. I'm glad you're watching. Awesome. Um, all right. Why did we switch from RVing to boating? It's from <laughs> Sarah. And uh, we have not switched. We are just integrating in a second. We like stop. both. We like both. We will be RVing in the winters and uh, exploring America's Great Loop by boat, which will be taking us north. We're going to do it very slowly, probably over several years, which yes. means as, as we get north, they'll have this thing called winter, <laughs> uh, where we'll have to store the boat, winterize it, and move back into the RV for the winter. So we love both, um, and we're, we continue, and intend yeah. to continue. And, and why? Because why not? Yeah, we know. We, we've always wanted to do boating. Our very first date, 11 years ago, we mm -hmm. actually talked about eventually wanting to do boating. So this is all just kind of part of our mm -hmm. mission. And uh, Rick wants to know if we got sea legs yet. So far, I mean, we haven't been a lot. We, we drove out into the Gulf just a mile and turned around just to say we did. But, but yeah, yeah <laughs> most of our journey will be intercoastal waterways, rivers, and canals. So in good weather, it's going to be very still water. Um, we have had some rough days here. We've been in the, the same marina for almost two months now. We love it here in Fort Myers, and we're just enjoying a slower pace for right now um, while we're dealing with boat projects. And we've had some rough days out here, and we've had some rough days on anchor um, while we've done some anchoring out. And it's fun, it's still at this point. Um, but yeah, I think we're doing pretty well with it. Mm -hmm. I think I just saw Sherry pop up say that she's watching my mom and dad. So, hi everybody! <laughs> we'll, hope, we'll be seeing you later in uh, next month. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, how long did we have to air out the Zeopedic before it stopped stinking? I've, I've found that they usually are good within 24 hours yeah. or less. There, there, there's, yeah, these, these mm -hmm. foam mattresses that at first when you open the box, have your windows open and mm -hmm. ventilation cranked up because when they're, they've been sealed and vacuum packed, and it's kind of amazing how small they are when they're all rolled mm -hmm. up in the boxes. And as they're inhaling air, they're exhaling a lot of chemical smell and just let them do it. You know, go out, leave, leave for... Open the windows, yeah. ventilate, whatever you need to do to ventilate it out. But after so. 24 hours, it's, you can't smell a thing. Yeah, and in yeah. an RV, because it's usually your only bed, is you do want to be very, con uh, be concerned about that, you know, that we try to open it in the morning if we can, mm -hmm. let it air up most of the day before we need to sleep in it that night, mm -hmm. or do it when we have other options. So, yeah. like when we were replacing our mattresses um, and trying all those ones out, is we would kind of try to schedule it when we had non-RVing trips. So, like we had it picked up like, just before a cruise, or something mm -hmm. like that. Um... Uh, what kind of sh thread counts do you like in the sheets? We, like the Denver mattress sheets, you can give them as a shout out. Yeah, uh, so we mentioned that Denver mattress had uh, given us, or Lippert Components had given us a Denver mattress to try out, their RV one, and that came with some microfiber sheets that we love. Yeah. I do not know what the thread count is. I don't pay attention to that sort of stuff. And I can't really focus that small to count them. It's more than I can count. With, you know, yeah. yeah, and we like... We like soft microfiber sheets. This tends to be what we like. And the ones that uh, Denver Mattress sells, um, the, we've really liked them. I've got them on our household tab on our gear page. So you can find that at technomaddy.com slash RV gear for mm -hmm. the current sheets that we loved. We loved them so much from the bus, the free set that they gave us, that we bought a set for the boat. Yeah, so that, that is major endorsement right there. Uh-huh. Um, is the wine good? Yes, um, the wine is This is actually yes, yes. quite good. 
Um, so yeah, a lot of questions about mildew and moisture control, and yeah, you do need to be aware of that um, in an RV or boat. And like we mentioned in the presentation, is you, know, you want to put something underneath the mattress for ventilation. And, and just check it too. I mean, mm -hmm. that's you know, we had that we had we ran into a little bit of, of mildew with the Oliver, just because we'd gone so long because we'd converted the dinette to a mattress, and it was such a pain to lift up and look underneath that we went a long time without checking and a little bit of water had come in one of the windows and it just sat there and got a little gunky mm -hmm. yeah, but bleach cleaned it up and yep. that's a big chore but done. keep an eye on it that's why we don't like to invest a lot in the mattress is because on the road especially on the water is we do anticipate that um, they're probably going to have more environmental challenges than they will in a house mm -hmm. and we want to feel okay about not throwing away a big investment. Right. We don't also don't want to be throwing stuff into a landfill either. So. Right. so, yeah, but if we get three or four or five years out of a mattress, that's great. We're not trying mm -hmm. to find a 10 or 20 year mattress mm -hmm. like you might with a house. Right. Uh, how thick was the mattress? So the Zeopedic that we got at Big Lots, I believe was a 10, 10 inch. inch. I think it's 10 inches. Uh, we wanted, uh, 10 inch was about the max we wanted in mm -hmm. that bedroom because we have a low ceiling. Yes. Yeah, If it, every inch above 10 is cricks in the neck um, and critical Sitting times. Up. Yeah, because yeah. I, I usually get up in the morning, got my laptop, and I actually work from bed for the first couple of hours sometimes, and I didn't want to have to be doing this. <laughs> <laughs> um, thoughts on whether a mattress protector will keep mildew down? So, yeah, you can put uh, moisture barriers on top mm -hmm. of it, and that'll prevent your own body's sweating during the night from reaching down into the mattress. Um, I We have tried them. I know one, I don't like the sound of them underneath. And they, they kind of, yeah. I, I, it's that just drives, drives me crazy, and um, the other thing I don't like about them is I like the feel of memory foam underneath my body, and I felt putting any mattress protector on top of it tends to decrease that memory foam feel. So for me, I'm willing to live with it. It is just being aware of the moisture, and you know. Yeah. But yeah, you can totally protect it longer if that's your goal, and you want to give up some of the benefits of memory foam. Um, did you say? This? that putting inner springs under the mattress will help with keeping it cool. It could, uh, yeah. but it does, uh, the, the inner spring by the Froley system that we talked about, that actually gives Adds you the spring inch, system. Right. It also gives you about an inch of airflow underneath, which is great. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's intriguing. We've not personally used it, but mm -hmm. it seems really, really mm -hmm. kind, of, kind of a cool system. Mm -hmm. um, Doug would like to know, have we ridden out any storms in the boat yet? Yes, one, yes. one major storm while at anchor, and I guess... We've had a couple, get, couple well, storms while here at the docks. Yeah, we're in a Florida afternoon thunder shower, and some of them can be fairly intense. We, we had some winds kick up to 40, 50 mile per hour about what, a week ago or so. Yeah. Yeah. Learning how to how to spider tie and. Um, yep, just keep our lines tight, and it, it gets kind of a little rocky. But mm -hmm. overall, I, and actually, this is one plus about sleeping on the boat. I find the rocking motion leads to such great sleep. It does. It's amazing. It's, it is a wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. you know, sleeping on the boat is a big, very nice. We're, yeah. I'm really liking boat life. <laughs> Quite a bit. I still love RV life, but I'm really liking boat life. Yes. Um, Rick would like to know, when will you guys be heading to the New England area? Um, when we get there? Yeah, it might be a year, two, three. Who knows what kind of pace we'll end up taking. But I'm uh, looking forward to boating in New England. It looks Yes. Yeah. So yeah. we are three months into the Great Loop at this point and 44 miles. And there's 6,000 more to go. <laughs> That's the pace we're keeping. We'll probably go a little faster once we get yeah. going. But mm -hmm. um, we're gonna, we're, our intention is to move a set amount of miles, not a set, a yeah. non-set amount yeah. of miles, and then find cool cities with marinas when walking distance to cool stuff and, and get you, monthly rates. Yeah, monthly spots are... Mm -hmm. Awesome, and that's or or people who've got spots we can uh, tie up and dock and stuff like mm -hmm. that is we want to have long stays. So many loopers go and they're just one day or two days in places, and that's way too fast for us. Mm -hmm. uh, Johnny wants to know what our tropical storm hurricane plan is. Don't drown. Is uh, be smart, <laughs> keep an eye on the weather, and make the best possible choices yeah. we can. Uh, we have the bus in mm -hmm. Central Florida, so we always have that as yeah. a backup house. And we have two family members in Florida on both coasts with sticks and bricks houses. Yeah. And we actually have a full video that we did mm -hmm. on oh, YouTube on about that. our hurricane plans. Yep. Check our new FAQ uh, playlist. We actually addressed that on uh, June 1st on hurricane season. The start of the season. hurricane season, season. yeah. Yep. Uh, Envy Out Lounger, we're like, no, do we have a washer <laughs> and dryer on the boat? We have a washer. <laughs> No, we have a washer and dryer. It's one of those combo, like, splendy <laughs> things. It, it's a washer and a hot steamer. And I think if we let it try to dry for about three or four days, it might maybe get there. But 
the so we wash things and we hang them up to dry and that's mm -hmm. been working out really surprisingly well i didn't think i'd care about it but it's been nice yeah i've been liking having those a washer it can do about four or five days worth of laundry yeah. for us we used to have a pattern of we could go like two or even three weeks without doing laundry and we'd just do a huge laundromat run in the in the when we lived in the bus and that worked great for us. You know, we had enough clothes on board that, that that was not a big deal and was, you know, in a laundromat you're in and out an hour and it's set. But here we're just have we have a lot less clothes, we you know, much smaller closets on board and on the boat and we're just doing laundry much more often. But it's kind of just simple because it's there. Yep. And uh, yeah, we just have to now that we're in storm season, so pretty much every day between three and four o'clock, you can set your eye watch to it. I forget to set it. Mm -hmm. Um the storms kick up, and we definitely are having to think, do laundry in the morning and dry before those storms come in, or else they get a second wash, they get a second <laughs> rinse. <laughs> or, or they might get blown away. We've almost yes, had that. Yes. <laughs> um, so there are no vents. Ours yes. is a non-vented yeah, yeah, dryer. So that, that is the catch, is the non-vented combo washer dryers really don't dry. They say they do, but they don't because there's nowhere for it to go, and they basically just waste water, and they burn through water like crazy, and they still don't get dry. Um, so, yeah. It's just a lot easier. We just do a wash cycle, put them up on the yeah. fly. We have lots of drying space on the flybridge. Yeah. Um, Maybe someday we'll upgrade to one, a vented one, um, but it's really turning into a low priority. Mm -hmm. yeah, at first we thought, oh, this is horrible. We're going to have to replace this. But It's yeah. better for your clothes to line dry anyway. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <sighs> Right. Mm. Are there any other pending questions? Are we caught up? <laughs> ah. Well, I hope this is the YouTube live experience has been fun and uh, a good twist for everybody. Um, and theoretically, with YouTube live, we'll be able to do multi-cameras and even, like, simulcast from the drone and other fun things um, once we start to expand out what we're doing. Um, so, yeah, YouTube live, cool. And we are actually broadcasting via Sprint, um, which, you know, normally Sprint is the fourth place carrier, but it actually is working really, really well here, and it's kind of separate from all our other stuff, so we're using it Sprint as our upstream channel, and it actually worked. So, very rarely we get to say something nice about Sprint, but go Sprint. Yes, so it's been, it's been really fun to be in a metro urban area. Now, Fort, Fort Myers is not urban like compared to New York City or anything. No, but, but compared to a lot of the places we've been. It's been a good meshing for us because we have literally just one block around the corner. We have a grocery store, a very nice one. Um, the other direction, maybe two blocks, uh, we have two sushi restaurants, four Mexican restaurants, Two pizza places, a barbecue place, an oyster bar, several bars, coffee shops, um, and all sorts of stuff to do. Yeah, uh, and we've been out to see plays. We've um, been taking lifts to get around town, to, um, using a lift to go go out to theaters and stuff. Um, we actually rented a car this past weekend to do a Costco run and do some like driving touring and stuff. So, it's it's been kind of a great experience to be kind of still in a city on a boat without a car. And it's been fantastic. So this, it's off-season here, so we're paying off-season rates at the marina. Um, and because they're clearing out the marina for the summer, for they're putting the people in more of the protected areas because the hurricane season really picks up in this area of the world. Usually August, September is where the real risk starts coming in. So most of the year-round people have moved away into the interior of the marina. So we're still out on the exterior, and we're pretty much got the corner to ourselves. So we have panoramic open water oh views. Oh, my gosh. We've got some of the best views we've had ever. Um, we got a view of a bridge out one side and an open a mile water. A mile-wide river. And, and great sunsets, and it's... And it's like private. We got two other liveaboards that live on this dock that we see maybe a couple times a day, and it's just been—it's got all the advantages of anchoring without all the disadvantages of yeah. having nothing to do. So it's been really hard to tear ourselves away from it. <laughs> and we've been in such motion for the last couple of years and not taking longer stops. It feels really. Yeah, good. we're catching up on boat projects. Like you know, we're getting our dinghy straight away because we don't want to head to the Keys until we have a way to get mm -hmm. around. So that's happening. Hopefully, mm -hmm. in the next two weeks. And oh, somebody wants to know what marina we're at. Oh, yeah, the marina I was going to get to. We're at Legacy Harbor Marina. And this is a great marina. Appar people keep telling us we're going to be ruined and spoiled because we're staying at one of the best marinas as our first or second, I guess. But, okay, We've got spoil an on me. We have an on-site uh, <laughs> pool. 
Uh, so it's great in the afternoons. Fitness to, center. A fitness center. Go Fabulous out. staff. Fabulous. Oh, the staff here is amazing. Um, it's uh, floating docks, so we don't have to worry about tide changes or changing our lines throughout the day. Um, it's just, it's, we're here for the first month and we're away for 10 days on a bus trip. And uh, we got back and we're like, we're just not ready to leave. We like living downtown. This is exactly what we envisioned boat life was going to be for us. It's more like a floating condo um, that we can move every so mm -hmm. often. And it's just been nice. And it's we got great resources here for getting boat projects done. We've uh, had all of our engine maintenance. We just did all that. We hired a mechanic who taught us how to do the engine maintenance. And um, we've had we built a toilet. Uh, we built a shower sump box. Um, it's been project, project, project. And, you know, sometimes the projects aren't necessarily intentional. They just, like, you know, when she says we re rebuild something, it's something broke and we had to fix it so we could take a shower. But we're, we're learning all these boat systems and figuring them all out. Um, I just saw something pop up about my grandma. Oh, my grandma's watching! Ah! <laughs> Yay! Oh. <laughs> that is awesome. Uh, radio contest. Grandma, see you next month. Uh, Rabi, uh, radio contester would like to know what is our favorite tequila? Oh, I love tequilas, but I don't... Whatever's in my margarita, really. Um, Whatever Nina's serving me. Yeah, the Nina Ritas are good. Yeah. And um, I, I guess, I, I mean, I I would love to do some really seriously good tequila tastings, cause, but I don't have any favorites yet. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but um, Joe would like to know... Uh, oh, sorry. Georgiana, we'd like to know when is your next review on Wi-Fi boosters, and we just completed an intensive round of Wi-Fi booster testing. Mm -hmm. That's our work life. Yes. Uh, running rvmobileinternet.com, and we Actually, have a separate YouTube channel for that. Isn't it mobileinternetinfo.com? Yeah. yeah, we're trying to, to, to kind of rebrand a little bit, yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, you can go check that out over there. Our members have access to our very in-depth reviews. Uh, we reviewed a whole bunch of Wi-Fi extending and cellular booster and antenna gear recently, and all those reviews are getting yeah. updated. Go, go check the other side. This is fun night. And, yep, no and work. No, we're not, no, talking, we're not talking about internet tonight, other no. than to give Sprint a thumbs up just because yep. they earned it. Yep. Um, well, any problems with internet coverage? I mean, you always have problems with internet <laughs> coverage. That's that's the name of the game. Um, we wouldn't have problems where <laughs> we wouldn't have a job reporting on mobile internet. If yeah, there were actually, problems true. With if, there, if there weren't problems with internet coverage, we'd have to like get other jobs or something. <laughs> or actually, maybe no. If there were no problems, we could probably retire. That's true. Yeah. When so when there are no longer problems with internet coverage, then then we we'll do just about boats and buses and no internet yes. tech geeking. Uh, Bob would like to know: Will you do a video on YouTube Live on the how to how to of what? <laughs> Uh, so every month we do a topic of how to on something. I've so, seen a couple requests. So people ask about Kiki. She, this is usually nap time for Kiki when we do our video chats, <laughs> but she's here. Uh -huh. She's loving boat life. She doesn't like the lack of lizards. Yes, if you want to, instead of sending a bottle of wine, you want to send a lizard to no, us? No, no, do not send lizards. They know where we're at now. They'll send us <laughs> real lizards. Small lizards. She'll take care of them. She's, <laughs> that is her one big complaint on boat life is lack of lizards. She's getting, uh, so the one thing we're loving, particularly because we have the marina to ourselves, this end of the marina, is every night, almost every night, actually right about now. It's walk time. No, she, no, in a couple uh, hours. Yeah, like right, right before bed, she'll want to go for a walk, and because we're on the dock and there's nowhere for her to go, we can take her out for a walk leash-free, and we'll just walk a quarter mile, because it's a quarter mile to the end of the dock and back, and um, and she'll just trot along and have a great time, and she loves her dock walks at night. Yes, and she seems to like having more space to run around. She has her own room. The pilot house <laughs> was kind of turned into the cat room. So her litter box, her robot is up there. She has a robotic feeder, and she's got a, a chair that she just sits up there and monitors it. Her scratch, she has a tall scratching post now, and she runs around a lot more. <laughs> up and down the stairs and yeah she yeah. seems to really like it yes she doesn't like not being able to just walk off and chase lizards though yes um ben would like to know how is it that someone can send us a bottle of wine well thank you for thinking <laughs> of us ben you know how to send us wine you show up at our house with us sometime yeah uh, do that <laughs> <laughs> um but if you would like to send us a virtual bottle of wine if you're appreciating these things go to our website technomadia.com Scroll down to the lower hand, right hand corner, and there's a leave a tip pull down where you can choose to send us caffeine, you can Cat send treats. kiki treats, you can send a bottle of wine, or if you're feeling really, really grateful, we have higher level options too. 
but uh, we, do, we are not doing these for um, earning an income. This is not part of our living expenses. This is all of the contributions we get for that all go to extras. That's what funds our sushi nights out Yeah. Um, or our wine. Um, we do these for fun. This is our hobby. Our work life is right, over that, at the Mobile Internet Resource that, That's why we're not promising we're going to have a video every certain X day of the week, and we're not going to be doing fancy production stuff, although sometimes Sheree can't help herself. And But, yeah, this is uh, this is kind of... <laughs> This, this is fun. If we're, if we're having fun, we'll keep doing it. And yeah. If we feel appreciated we for it, we'll keep doing yeah. it. And, yeah, show the appreciation. Say thanks in comments, emails. Um, that goes a long way. Um, Mary says she just tuned in. Will this be repeated so I can watch from the beginning? Yeah, so YouTube is taking an archive. It should be available for archive viewing as soon as we're, we click the stop mm -hmm. button. And I will be doing a produced version of this and cutting out all the the non-related stuff of uh, so it'll be shorter and more produced and I'll have a blog post up that goes and, along with the it, content yeah, and, with the and, links and that might that also we're recording with the second camera too and it'll a second better. microphone so it might be a better quality archive mm -hmm. we'll see this is our first time doing this mm -hmm. kind of YouTube live so mm -hmm. why is Chris's glass empty I can fix that ah thank you whoever that was oh Ben thank you Ben always looking out for me there we are oh oh oh, oh. <laughs> Kiki there we go lost the cat Traded the cat for wine. I'm happy. <laughs> uh, Randall wants to know, did we get a latex top? No, we went with memory foam. We're memory foam snob. Uh, not snobs. But I, I just like memory foam. Well, Lisa was, had a... Uh, um, a little bit of latex in it. Yeah, yeah. Had, uh, latex is good, um, but but we're, we're, de we're, we're more foam than latexy people. Mm -hmm. um, Doug would like to know, what kind of dinghy are you looking at? Um, well, I don't know if Tony is online, but... Um, we're, we're getting an Achilles, and we'll talk all about our dinghy once we have it and inflate it and stuff. And we've just picked out our engine. I'll probably be ordering the engine in the and next the few days. The Davit system was the tricky part, uh, yes. because this boat originally had a boat deck up on the flybridge. Well, this model... The model yeah. did, but this boat didn't. Yeah, this boat was ordered and never had a Davit crane installed. So we're getting, we had to figure out how to, how to carry a dinghy on our swim platform. And so that was the toughest challenge was figuring that out and we ordered our davit system on friday hopefully it'll be here in two weeks um the dinghy should hopefully be here in another week the engine will probably order in the next two cut probably tomorrow we'll order the engine so all the parts are coming together and we'll probably do some video and talk about it once they're all here yep uh do, 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 do. how can i get advance notice when we're going alive so uh, we actually sent out um, an email alert to people on our newsletter list a couple days ago when we decided to do this. Uh, you can sign up for that at technomaddy.com. Uh, just do our subscribe list. There's an option to be on our video list. Uh, we set this up as a live event on uh, YouTube earlier last week, and it, I was surprised it didn't send out notifications. I thought that was one of the features, but we did well, set this up in advance. Yeah, so so it, theoretically, YouTube, if YouTube thinks you're interested, I, I think it did send out notifications okay. to a certain percentage of people. Um, so we're still, we're very new to using YouTube Live and using YouTube Live events. And we're actually using beta software on the Mevo camera to broadcast this. And um, um, actually, a thumbs up to the Mevo because it hasn't crashed this entire video. So yay, Mevo. Um, but yeah, it's all still kind of new. And, but if you track our mailing list and just pay a little close attention. We, you know, we try to give notice. Oh, I saw someone comment their daughter works at TaylorMade. Uh, and yes, we actually just bought new fenders from TaylorMade. Yeah, I'm impressed by them. Yeah, yeah, we're trying to decide what to do about the um, fender racks. So, you know, mm -hmm. that's our next fender-related purchase. I guess TaylorMade makes a lot of boat stuff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yep. Someone says they got YouTube email, so if you're, uh, I recommend subscribing to our YouTube channel. Uh, yeah. Hopefully you'll get notified. Yeah, I'm not sure what formula YouTube uses to decide what mm -hmm. notifications go out. Mm -hmm. but and we also put a notification up on our Facebook page, too. So we do, if we decide that we're doing something in advance, we do try to get notification out. Sometimes we just decide, hey, we're in the mood to go live, and we just go live. Um, <laughs> we, our theory on this is we do it for fun, and sometimes pre-scheduling puts too much stress on us, because... Yeah, we don't know if we have the bandwidth for it, if we're going to be in the mood. Um, if we have, like, a big, heavy work day, sometimes we just don't have the energy to do these. So mm -hmm. uh, we're finding pre-scheduling these and building building up too much anticipation for it was actually counterproductive to our stress levels. Right. Yeah, so. particularly when we try to schedule them way in advance. It just if, if, like, breaking news happens, like we had to deal with all this craziness, the FMCA and Verizon deal, our work life goes crazy on certain days, and... 
if we have a, one of these fun videos that we then have to do after a crazy work day, it's like that's the last thing we want to do. So, where do you send virtual lizards to Kiki? So it'd be the same wants tip. The real ones. She wants real ones, but she likes cat treats too. Yes. So yeah, the, the the tip feature on the blog, um, uh, technomadia.com, bottom right hand corner. There's a tip button, and there's an option for send Kiki cat treats, and you can just pretend those are lizards. Yes, that that's her favorite treat. <laughs> Um, so yeah, it's been fun. A lot of people are saying they got them at different times on YouTube. Yeah. Um, it's, it, the YouTube stuff is all new for us. Um, we had been using live stream in the past. I think we're probably not going to use live stream again. Yeah, I'm trying to simplify our social media life. We were doing things in too many places and for a hobby. And after work stuff, it was just getting to be too much. So um, I like that YouTube Live is now um, reliable enough and easy enough to use. Um, I like that um, it has the option for us to embed it right into a web page. So it's on right. the video page on Technomadia. And uh, so those that might be anti-Google don't have to log into Google if they don't want to. And it, it records a nice archive mm -hmm. automatically. So we yep. can you know have that just go live. Google handle, handles it. Um, and, well, you know, uh, as a nice perk, it, we don't get a ton of it, but, you know, when you watch things on YouTube, we get a, like, a teeny little bit of advertising, advertising out of it. So, so it, it, when we do stuff on live stream or other things like that, it's, we get nothing. So, you know, it's nice to have that little YouTube kickback. Yeah, it's not our motivation. Yeah. Like I said, doing <laughs> these is not a money earner for No, it, it's like, like $2, but, you know, <laughs> it at least, it, it at least it says something. It's like, hey, we got a penny. <laughs> Uh, someone says, where can I find your mailing address? Um, um, <laughs> it's not hard to find if you want to stalk us, but uh, ask please, us because, first. Because handling, I don't know, let us know what you're mailing us. Ma mail first. goes to a forwarding service. And, and we have to pay to forward it, so. <laughs> yeah, so, so our mailing address is not hard to find, but we prefer you not stalk mm -hmm. us that way. <laughs> unless you ask us first. Cause, or if it's just a card, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, right. if it's a card. Or cash, cash. Is <laughs> no. Or a bottle, bottle of wine. Don't. You want to send to our, our yeah. Phone so phone. so yeah, it, we we actually have had somebody like say, can we have your current address? We've got to send you something, and then I like, promise you'll like it. And and it was it was a bottle of wine, and it was mm -hmm. awesome. So yes, yay. That yes, was from you, Harvest Hosts. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. If, if you do want to physically mail us something, please check in advance. You know, no matter of limited space, so we're we're very protective <laughs> of our space and the things we bring into it. But uh, just email us, uh, contact at technomadia.com. Yeah. And, um, and if we're in your area and you think we might want to be able to get together, that sometimes works out. And, you know, um, yeah. yeah, we do like meeting people in person when we have time and energy. We are introverted and, believe it or not, private people. But we, we're also homebodies. And, um, <laughs> so. Yeah, but, yeah, we just had a, a cool meetup just last week with some... Uh, Followers who online followers, and yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. Yeah, but our awesome. one request is please don't make plans just to show up at our house. We, we, we trust you guys when we tell you where we're at that you're right. not, you're, you're not going to make plans. Please always coordinate with us in advance so we can have clothes on. That's that's the most important thing is we are not always stressed, mm -hmm. and or and, and sometimes we're stressed, or we're working hard, <laughs> yes. and we're, we need focused stuff. Yes. So, we no, just, so, yeah, we love to plan our social times, but yes, but we, yeah, we love meeting people. We love meeting people, we just want to make time for it. Give us, the, give us the courtesy of making time for you. Yes. That's important to us. Alrighty. Ah. Okay, I don't know. I'm going to check the question sheets. Yeah. I think we've done a pretty good job with this one. Oh, uh, somebody asked if we're going to the Keys. Um, yeah, um, so that is, uh, Laura, um, that is one of the possibilities. Um, our goal is next on the Great Loop is to get to the east coast of Florida. And we would like to go to the Keys before we leave Florida because it'll probably be five or so years before we're back in the art, in the boat anyway. And the Keys would be amazing to explore. Um, so that's one reason we're doing the dinghy now because the Keys is a lot more fun with a dinghy. Right. So we're kind of, Fort Myers is the fork in the road. There's two ways um, around Florida or across Florida. You either take the Okeechobee Waterway um, east from Fort Myers, straight across the middle of the state and come out in Stewart, Florida, or you go south to the Keys and then come up the other side. Um, if we go across Okeechobee, that doesn't mean we're skipping the Keys entirely. We might go south 
before um, we go north. Yeah, we might go south before we go so north. So the other the other thing we're dealing with, and Chris's family is on the uh, watching right now, is his dad is going in for major surgery in about a week, and uh, we want to make sure that, and we also want to go home for a family reunion. Yep. So, so we'll, we'll be up in late July. And, so we're, we're um, planning yeah. around access to airports right now. <laughs> it, that's that's the top priority for us, um, and um, it's going to the Keys would make that more difficult. So yeah. we might save the keys for maybe August, but we'll also be, you know. Watching weather, too, because that's too, hurricane so. season's ramping up. So, for prime time, so. Yeah. So, yeah, we, we steer by serendipity. We don't plan too far in advance. Um, but we'll either be going east or south from here. We don't know when, either mid-July or August. Who knows? We'll see. Yeah. Right now. We love where we're at, so we're yeah. very happy. Yeah, we're, we're very happy here. Um, but, you know, both both routes would be fun. I think the keys would be a lot more fun, but, uh, you know, lots to do down there. So I don't think we'll ever run out of awesome. That's that's my theory. So Jay is threatening to ship us a giraffe. A giraffe. Um, we don't have that much headroom. The boat's got a little bit more headroom than the bus, but it could still... Go the it could go on the flybridge. We could cut a hole in the, in the bimini. In the bimini and have a giraffe. Yeah, but we got to get it on the bridges. Yeah, I think I have bridges, and that would we're eventually going to do solar up on the do a solar bimini. Yeah, I think a giraffe could be tough, but talk to us about it because if if the giraffe knows how to navigate or something, and maybe some's got some skills, yeah, we can figure something. Maybe so. Yeah, I yeah giraffes are cool. I have to say. No, I love giraffes. They're gorgeous. Yeah. Um, WA wants to know if he mellowed since he moved on the boat. I think so. I don't know that it's just moving on to the boat. I mean, the boat has presented new challenges. There's, you know... Things any, are broken. Any new home you move into, there's always new thing, or any used home that you move into always has a element of things always breaking. Um, so it's definitely new challenges, new things to learn, which is fun and yep. Yep. stressful at the same time. And, yeah, but things break. And but they, I think, I think overall, what has... The mellowing is coming from is... We've been gearing up for this for so long and been in the boat hunt and logistical mode of getting here. Well, and we went a whole year without that long stop. We did, and that got old. Um, we'd like to stop every so often for a month or two and take a break in the RV or whatever we're doing. And we hadn't had that. And um, so definitely just being having this, the logistical phase done and having bought the boat. Yeah. And the transition, because we this has been on our radar for a very long time, and then we've been in active pursuit of it for a year. So getting it done, <laughs> and being still. Yeah, being still, I think, is, mm -hmm. is and having some space to spread out. And so one thing that's really helped our sanity too is, in the bus in the summer, the air conditioners are always over your head and made a lot of noise. And in the boat, the air conditioners are so much quieter. So uh -huh. it's, it's just a much more pleasant place to be getting through the summer sometimes. Um, um, okay, uh, no cool name. No, that's not a cool name. Um, huh? cool have name. you had to clean the hull yet? So in this um, area of Florida, it's generally recommended that you have a, your underside cleaned about monthly or so. We've had one cleaning done. And we will do another one before our next uh, major repositioning because that affects the fuel economy, the fuel economy and drag coefficient. Because you start to get barnacles and algae and stuff that change your water dynamics. Um, the going rate around here seems to be about a dollar fifty per foot. So it was just for our boat. It was just under one hundred and fifty dollars to hire a scuba diver, a team of scuba divers, to go under and knock off all the barnacles. I think this next one will be a little more expensive because I think some of our propeller zincs are due. Maybe, yeah. We'll they were see. getting a little low. So mm. we'll be changing those out. But we'll before we leave, whether we go to the Keys or Lake Okeechobee, we'll have another cleaning done. Mm -hmm. um, just because this sort of water and the warmth tends to have more barnacle growth. Yeah. So they, they recommend monthly for yeah. cleaning. So Russ asks, does the Okeechobee waterway flow east or west? And it actually flows out of Lake Okeechobee both directions. So the Kalahousachi River flows past Fort Myers from Lake Okeechobee, and that's flowing west. And from um, the whatever the waterway is from Stewart from Lake Okeechobee, that's flowing east. So there's, I guess, two outlets from the lake, and they each flow to the Atlantic or the Gulf Coast. What's PF sense and multiple backup winds? I think Jay is asking about different ways to automatically fail over between two different networks. And that sounds our, like work. Yeah, and normally I'd 
I fail over manually. It's it's I I find the auto, uh, the manual failover to be more reliable than automatic in all the work I've done. But that's a work question, so we'll punt that. Uh, Matt, what was the hardest thing about finding a dinghy? The dinghy was no problem. <laughs> it found dinghy, us. The dinghy found us. The hard part's been figuring out the davit. Yeah. How we how are we going? And we'll to we'll talk it? about dinghies in our once we get all the parts here in place. Do you have any? Uh, Family in Nova Scotia. Someone's asking any Dumfries in Nova Scotia. Dad, Dad, are there any Dumfries in Nova Scotia? You're watching this, and he's kind of tracked the family tree. I don't know of any in Nova Scotia, but there's there was a bunch of Dumfries came over from Ireland, and who knows where they ended up. <sighs> I saw Ben asked about having our air conditioner serviced. Um, we actually just had one of our air conditioners go out and had to have it serviced on a on. on Fortunately, we found a guy on the same day who was able to fix it, um, and in the process, I learned how to, I should be able to fix it again if it happens. So, yeah, learning how to fix things on boats is key. And we like having three air conditioners, so one can fail, and we're not doomed. All right, I think the questions are caught up. I'm going to say it's been over an hour now, <sighs> and it's probably time to... Go back to bed? <laughs> <laughs> Or what? Yeah, no, I think we're done. Okay, we're done. Oh my god, I get to turn off the light and the, yes, the press the stop crazy. and okay. Okay, thank you, everybody. I'm going to stop this stream. Yes, and uh, yeah, just keep tuned on the blog. I'm gonna have a blog post up recapping the mattress information that we shared and a more produced version of this video just focus on the mattress. Yay! Okay. Bye. See y'all later. Bing.